So Will, as an introduction, um, lots of game-changing developments in recent years. We see lots of things come up at ad tech. Um, you, as British Gas, have one of your own to, to announce. It's very, very new, but we have Mobile Energy just been launched. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what it is? Yeah, so uh, Mobile Energy, it's a new energy brand and service uh, aimed at a younger demographic, basically. So uh, aimed at younger urban customers uh, who um, want to have easy ways to stay on top of their spend, split bills, move houses, and so on. So, so yeah, a new, a new offering uh, in the marketplace. Great. I think in, in lots of sectors, and utilities and energy is a little bit different given it's, it's so big, so regulated. Um, lots of other very big regulated industries are having quite disruptive neighbors arrive. So if you think about financial services with um, Jack Dorsey's Square coming in and kind of suddenly building $5 billion of transactions by accident almost in two years, there's going to be a competitor that comes in and does something similar to you and your industry in the future. Is this you preparing to fight back as British Gas? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we are um, we're innovating hard at the moment in an industry that probably is not uh, well, particularly well known for that historically. Um, so we're doing lots of things to try and uh, to try and change the game in our sector. I think that the kind of underpinning thing is that we're trying to segment our audience more so that we get more a more distinct understanding of different groups and then try and uh, and, and then try and produce products and services for those individual groups so in a way the innovation is a lot to do with uh, the data and the targeting and the way that we the way that we segment and then there's big opportunities uh, as you know around the technological possibilities in the energy industry so smart meters uh, are, are changing things a lot I don't know I don't know if people know what they are but they're ba basically digital uh, meters to replace uh, the, the dumb analog uh, gas and electric meter in your, in your house and, and those are going to be able to you know, talk to the internet basically and, and open up all kinds of new possibilities and we're leading the way in terms of that rollout so we've, done a, 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 we've fitted a million smart meters now but by 2019 everyone's going to have one uh, whether you like it or not you know we're rolling <laughs> these things out and it, it's a government uh, backed initiative, so your house is going to be able to talk to your talk, talk to the internet, and that's going to give you a lot more uh, information about your energy use. No more estimating your bills. No more uh, engineers coming around for meters. So there's a lot of change in that area that we're trying to lead, and and, and we're very enthusiastic about that. There's also um, things called home hubs, which have a SIM card in them, and again enabling uh, your uh, your home and your energy use to talk to talk to the internet, talk to smartphones, so we're doing things like remote heater control where you can basically change your central heating from your mobile phone uh, when you're out and about, and we're doing, doing mobile energy, which is, you know, a very app and digitally based thing. We've got a million uh, app downloads on, on the British Gas brand, so there's probably more happening in the way of innovation now for British Gas than there ever has been before, and a lot of it is underpinned by big technology changes going on in, in our industry. Great. This is a, it's opening up a slightly different demographic for you. If, um, if <coughs> any of the marketers here speak to consumers and we, we, we ask people to name what the, the sexiest brand is just now, you know, it, it's Apple, it's Nike, it's Samsung, it's, it's, uh, it's Coke. British Gas doesn't come up at the top of that list very come often, on, come on, Craig. to be fair. You know, you know that's <laughs> um, you're not known for your youth credentials, but this is—it feels like a younger end of the market. Is that—is that fair? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we um, so so we we were looking at the market and, as I say, trying to sort of segment it more. And we identified that there's a big growth in private rental in 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 this country, and particularly in cities, and particularly younger audiences. So there's a really strong rationale to try and do something different to. To appeal to younger audiences, and we sort of had a hunch that uh, none of the energy brands had particularly uh, there was particularly strong affinity with any of those brands and younger audiences. So you know, people living in living in cities, living busy twenty-something lives. And I think I, um, from my own personal experience, and probably everyone else in the in the room, when you're that age and you're living in that way, I don't think any of the energy companies either at a brand level feel particularly 
relevant or also in terms of the, w the way the service is built. So the service is, has historically been built for people that own their own homes as opposed to rent them and, and maybe a bit older. And I, I could had a very clear memory of uh, renting a flat in Barons Court and uh, getting a, a, a red reminder from British Gas actually uh, <laughs> for several hundred pounds and realising that I, well A, I didn't know what energy provider I was with. I didn't really know I was supposed to pay. This is when I first started you know, living not, not at home. And, and I didn't know that you basically had to pay the bills. I didn't know how to do that. And suddenly I kind of cratered my finances. And so we went and talked to customers in this younger group. And that was exactly, exactly what we found out, was that people had no affinity to energy and any energy company. And there was no service that really was built with their with their needs in mind. So I think when you talk about those cool brands, I don't, I think we've got to be realistic about, you know, the place of, of any energy brand we'll have in relation to an Apple or Burberry or whatever, but that we can create something much more bespoke for those kinds of people. Is, is it just for renters? Can, can I take it as a homeowner, for example? Yeah, no, anyone, anyone, anyone can have mobile okay. energy. I mean, I think we try to, we tried to make that renting audience the bullseye of it so you can, uh, so, so many of the functions on it are, are designed with that audience in mind. So you can split bills between flatmates. It's designed so you can move house very easily, so it's portable because people who rent move, you know, on average under every two years. Yeah. Um, and the, the kind of rewards that we're going to have, again, are going to orient towards that younger renting audience. But yeah, anyone, anyone can have it. Uh, Great. And hopefully lots of people will want it. So you, you, you lucked out mobile energy, me, Yes. most personal brands you can get, perhaps. Yeah. And why didn't you launch it under British Gas? Obviously, you've spent millions of pounds kind of investing in, in that brand. It's, it's got a national presence beyond almost anything else. It's, you know, it's an institutional piece like British Telecom, British Gas, etc. Yeah. Why the new brand? Well, I mean, the first thing to say is uh, the British Gas brand is very strong. It's the strongest, definitely the strongest brand in the energy uh, sector. And it's got, you know, 12 and a half million customers and 10,000 engineers, half the homes in the UK. So it's not like it's a, uh, it's not like it's a sort of thing that holds us back. But as I said before, when we talked to uh, that younger demographic, we, it was just clear there was an opportunity uh, to do something different. And, and as you say, we sort of lucked out a little bit because we talked to the audience. We did some sort of co-creation workshops with young private renters and we sort of came up with this concept of mobile energy because they were saying, I want to be able to deal with it all on the smartphone. And then somebody spotted that my, the acronym of that was me and that created. So we thought that's a fantastic brand property. And it just seemed like there was a really strong opportunity to create something a bit different, create some values that a younger audience would feel were for, for them. Because there's no doubt that the British Gas brand starts to become more relevant as you get into your 30s and you own your own home and maybe you've got a family and those sorts of things so um, and and the other I think the other thing on it was uh, we did quite a lot of, to explore the role of the British Gas brand and it is it is mobile energy from British Gas so it's a, a bit like the early days of First Direct where I think at that point it was the Midland Bank was an important thing to underpin it because people are handing over credit card details it is about their central heating ultimately, so it's about some quite important things that yep. can go wrong. So having it underpinned by, by a well-known brand is good, but there's definitely an opportunity to create something that felt new and different for that group. And you tested it both ways, so people could kind of... Yeah, so we, we looked at it as, this is, mo this is Mobile Energy, a new, a new energy company, uh, and uh, people are quite open to that, but then there is a little bit of a, right, so I've got a fill in credit card details and things when I sign up to this and what happens if the energy supply stops working, etc. So I think in, in energy, the idea that it could be two guys in the proverbial garage probably would, <laughs> would worry people. A bit. Yep. So it kind of needs that stability that maybe some other... Especially with gas, need. right? Yeah, especially, <laughs> with, especially with gas. It's um, serious stuff. So um, early 20s, flat sharing perhaps. Um, utilities, is it, it's not really a priority subject. I don't imagine it's Friday night conversation for a lot of people. How did you 
address that apathy and, and what, what have you done to engage around that to get people kind of excited about something which isn't the most exciting or frequently exciting um, subject? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think the first thing on that is we don't know, we don't know if we have yet, really. So, I mean, this new thing that we're launching, we've we've sort of beta launched it mainly with our own uh, our own you know, staff, basically of that sort of age group, and we've done a bit of social media and PR on it. But it's very it's very early days. So, so this is a bit of an exclusive today. This is then. a bit, this is a world exclusive. <laughs> uh, hold the front page. The uh, so. It, it remains to be seen. I think we, um, and I think we have to be realistic about our category. You know, you're talking about the Nikes and, you know, Burberrys and Googles. I, I think, you know, we've got to be realistic about how, how big a part an energy brand will play in a young person's life. But I think um, what we do want to ensure is that the experience of, of, of interacting with this brand is as simple and intuitive and rewarding as it is on any of these other brands that you talk about. And I think the other thing is, it is, it is about branding, really, isn't it? It's, you know, we're, we're going to create aspects of the service which are unique to, to me, to mobile energy, but it will be a lot to do with whether we can create the right kind of brand values, have the right kind of dialogue with the customers, the right tone of voice, give them rewards and things that they can't get anywhere else. So, and I guess that's, that is back to the, I suppose, ultimately how, how appealing we make the brand and how, yeah. how well we do that. And um, obviously marketing, if this was a, a classic British gas app, um, it would be quite easy to, to shove a 30 second spot in the Coronation Street ad break, for example, and really reach a, a chunk of your demographic. How are you going to do it with, with these guys who are, are not watching TV very often? You know, they're glued to the smartphone and social is at the heart of everything. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's, it, it's been an interesting uh, experience already, actually, in that regard, in as much as, well, A, we don't have a very big budget because we're trying to start small, see how it goes, build it up, not do, not do like a massive, really expensive launch. We want to just sort of ramp it up and see how it goes, set the expectations, you know, in a, in a realistic way. But I think... So you wouldn't be surprised to hear we'll do lots of social media. We're going to do a program sponsorship with E4. We're going to try and do some events. But actually, we, we sort of started out with a premise or prejudice. Here. We don't want to do any conventional advertising. But actually, al almost on any budget uh, with any audience, you do you kind of come back to it might be, you know, it might be a bit boring in inverted commas, but there is still a role for. We're not. We're going to do a program sponsorship, so we're not doing TV ads, but we are going to do some print. We'll probably do some cross tracks in London and maybe some tube cars. And so some of the more traditional things still have a role, and I think to build a brand entirely on social media with real scale, I think is quite difficult to do. So there's definitely a role for a for a mix, and it's not just about the new stuff. I don't think. Um, sp speaking of the, the, the new stuff, what do you think the biggest technology-led decision uh, was in the creation of this? What, what, what do marketers out there have from new technology that we didn't have a few years ago? Uh, I, well, I think the, 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 the big thing that technology is enabling is you can make things uh, much more personalised and relevant. So, so back to that thing about particular audiences, I think we can get much more to the point where we can take particular demographics and build something that's perfect for them, you know, and do that multiple times, whether it's young renters or retired people that own their homes or landlords, whatever it is. So, so we can do things that's much more personalized uh, and relevant. Uh, as you know, you can do things much more quickly. So we only had the idea for mobile energy last November and we got it up and running uh, already. So I think things move much more quickly. And, and I think also in terms of the kind of internal selling, which is a big part of doing something like this, when you're in a big company, you can, you can, you can almost make it real before it is real. So in terms of selling it in, you don't go to the board of British Gas now going, oh, we've kind of got this idea and this concept. You can pretty much at very low cost show them what an app would look like and what the functionality would be. You just haven't built it yet and plugged it into all the systems and so on. But you, you, you can make it real. And I guess that acceptability of something being in, in beta is wide reaching both within the company and at consumer level as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I, I've been involved in quite a few conversations with British Gas about, you know, we need to get better at failure and all this. And I do, um, 
I find it slightly odd at times because I'd be surprised if my uh, employers were sort of actively encouraging us to screw things up, but there is an acknowledgement that you can, you know, fail fast and cheap. So, you know, we haven't spent very much money on the mobile energy as an example, yet it, we've, we, we've, we've built it pretty low cost and we're doing pretty low cost marketing and, we'll, and we will see what happens and, and we'll hope it'll be very successful. But I think the company is bought into the idea that we will learn as we go and the thing will evolve. And I think people yep. are, and, and again, because the technology makes that possible to do things more cost effectively, mm. um, there is that. There is a rational reason now why failing is okay, and that is that is. I think big companies are now getting to grips with that. Definitely, I think. Um, is is it fair to say that you've created this entire thing in less than a year, which is unusual for a company of, of your size? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, I guess will this be if it works? Fingers crossed for you. Um, will this be a poster child within the team to actually change how British Gas as a whole? looks at new product development and marketing or? Yeah, yeah, I think definitely. And, and, and this and other things that we're doing now are following a similar approach, which is getting small cross-functional groups of people, sometimes taking them off site somewhere. So sticking them in a, in the case of this one, in a windowless room in, uh, in Farringdon, uh, but taking people off, off site in, in small cross-functional groups relevant to the audience that you're trying to create for, give it a very ambitious uh, timeline. Uh, and we're doing that with this, but there's a number of other, the iterations of this remote heating control product that we've launched is happening in a, in a similar way. The way that we're beginning to um, iterate the app, uh, the website, etc. it is moving to this lean uh, model and our IT colleagues are, are very, embracing of that and the challenge sometimes is on the legacy systems that we have to integrate into uh, create certain amounts of complexity and we have got this huge customer base that we can't mess things up for but yep. but the company is getting very much more into lean innovative ways of doing things because the technology is there and the market's changing very rapidly sounds exciting yeah what else will we see do you think can you share? Give us a sneak preview. Uh, well, we're looking at other. Um, I think we're looking at other branding possibilities. So we're looking at um, where the future. So so where the future growth would come from. So there's the, we see big growth in uh, the landlords segment. You know the kind of flip side of the increase in private rental. So we'll be trying to do some interesting things in that space around this kind of connected homes technology. So remote heating control, intelligent boilers, intelligent hot water, um, uh, uh, remote monitoring of your home, security, all those sorts of things. And we're looking at whether there are different branding possibilities in, uh, in that area as well. So yeah, I think there'll be, more, there'll be more of this kind of innovation where customer segment need meets technology possibilities, meets branding. I think we think that's an interesting triangle and that there'll be more opportunities in the middle of that triangle.